Hi YouTube. I want to talk about autism and taking care of people with autism and well autism a lot of people that um have autism also have other complications like seizures, seizures, um food allergies, um allergic to um for instance Shelby is allergic to penicillin. He's a allergic to um, high pollen in the air and he's um, glu gluten intolerant and some of the so-called experts say that autism is more of a physical condition is actually some of them say it's actually a physical condition that affects you intellectually because you can't focus and with that I tend to agree with that um, I think the medical profession, I, I'm not a big fan of the medical profession because I think they um, just put people on assembly line and most doctors that I've known in the past, they, they had far too many um, patients. Um, Chevy had a neurologist when he was a, a little boy. He, I think he was about eight years old. And I found out that his neurologist had, um, from his secretary um, in one of his office, the, the um, Chevy let me know that Chevy's neurologist has three, no, two office locations, and he has about fifteen hundred patients in each one. And you know, um, maybe there are some superhuman people that can remember fifteen hundred patients and their illness and their conditions and their um, medications and and how they're um, you know in their side effects and how they're responding to the medication but um, I don't believe the typical doctor is capable of doing that but nevertheless um, I do believe that autism is primary a physical condition that causes um, complications intellectually and um, caring for someone with autism, is, like in Chevy's case, he's considered atypical. I mean, some people are so mildly artistic that it has little effect on them, on their life. It has little effect on their social um, social life, social abilities. Um, Shelby, um, is, I guess he would kind of be considered a midstream where um, he's not totally... Um, incapacitated but he is affected in a major way it's um socially he's affected um his behavior um affects his, his social life um and he but he's not a safety hazard so in some ways he's a he has a little bit of everything you know he's very independent he's um he's self-reliant in some ways and then in other ways, um, he needs help with some of the simplest things. But one thing I just want to cover real quick in this video is that um, I found out when you monitor his diet, in Shabby's case, um, he was having seizures. He The first one or two seizures, I just thought, you know, it just might have been a growing, something to do with him growing up and his hormones and things like that and but then for a while he was having seizures um well t once a month to me that was like um very often and some people would agree that's you know to have a seizure because a seizure is such a scary type of thing that um to endure one once a month you know that seems like a lot to me so um I started to like really observe when these seizures were happening and one thing I, I found out in Shelby's case that um, he was he usually when he did have a seizure it usually was around the time where um, we had surplus money and when we have surplus money we get more snacks and we have more um, you know not just food but more sugar um, sodas and um, juice things like that. And in Shelby's case, 
he can have sugar, but also in Shelby's case, he doesn't consume things in moderation. Anything that he likes, he wants it all the time. So like if the weekend come and it's Friday and I just got paid and we go grocery shopping and we got some cakes, we, we have a cake and we have some ice cream and we have some soda and we have some juice and um, and I know not to give him too much of this these things but he will t you know he will consume what I give him and then he will sneak you know around when I'm not looking or when I'm busy doing something else and he'll have even more so like I, I might give him uh, one can of soda but during the course of the day, he would have three, maybe four cans of soda, which is enough to cause him to have a seizure. And um, that's not including the ice cream that we might have had when we, um, when we went, when we were out and about, and you know the other things during during the day. So um, now, even though I try to stay stocked because we live, you know, in the desert, we live in the mountains. I try to stay stuck with the things that we like, the snacks and treats that we like, but I keep um, sweet things, I keep the soda and I keep the juices in a separate cabin from the one that we live in. And, um, and so far he don't go outside of the, the main cabin to um, look for these things, but I can't keep them in the main cabin and uh, one day I might not be able to bring them home at all. But it's just much more convenient for us to have everything that we want on the ranch so we don't have to leave the ranch or in the event that we can't leave the ranch. And so, um, but yeah, I, I only just like, for instance, his favorite juice is um, Humex. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. Um, Y-U-M-E-X. It's not too sweet. Um, it's basically, I, you know, I think it's a little sugar in there, a little added sugar but other than that it's all natural you know he can have so what we do now instead of me buying 12 cans of humex and um watching him drink four or five or six as many as i would allow him to drink and then as soon as i turn my back it might even be more i just bring two cans of juice in the house and i give him one can to drink you know to pour over ice and drink straight then the other can, I usually dilute that with um, either some tonic water, some sparkling water, or um, just some plain water. And sometimes I put a little um, lemon flavor in it. And um, I also add electrolyte to most of his juice. And so, so Shelby, he likes to drink juice, a lot of juice, all day long. So... Um, to keep him from intaking a lot of sugar, I also just make up his juice. I just have, um, I take some cold water and put some honey in it, some honey and lemon in it, and some electrolyte. And that's his juice. And, you know, I shake it up. So he has honey and lemon with electrolyte in it. And, um... Sometimes I put some water flavor in it. Um, we were doing the um, crushed water flavor all the time, all day long. But, um, and I think it's relatively compared to a lot of the artificial um, sweeteners that we have out there and artificial flavors, I think is pretty um, safe compared to most things. But, you don't want to be consuming too many chemicals of any type. You know, it is chemical. And when I finally um, found my glasses and, and tried to read the ingredients, it is like a chemical base. The, um, I like crush because me, I personally can't taste an aftertaste in the, um, the water flavors. So that's why I like, that's what I like about it. And that's why... Um, I use it um, quite often with Shelby's um, when I prepare his juice, but um, I don't allow him. I don't put a lot. I don't use it every time I fix him like two quarts of 
a juice. I don't use it every time. Sometimes he just get lemon and honey with the electrolyte. And um, sometimes he get the flavor with the um, crushed flavor. Sometimes we are also use um, the Umix juice. Instead of letting him have it straight, I mix it, you know, I dilute it. So this is just to keep his sugar level down. And ever since I've been practicing it, um, the seizures um, has stopped. Um, basically completely stopped he hasn't had a seizure in six months seven months and um so and i, I know that um because when he was when he was having the seizures it was always around payday or somebody's payday my payday or his payday and um it was always around when we would have extra sugar around the house you know cakes and pies and candy and different treats and if he would eat it in moderation he would probably be okay but Chevy I you know I know him and we've you know this has been going on for quite some time he's so and I believe because of his autism when he just sees something that he likes he, he don't want it in moderation he wants it all the time and doesn't realize the dangers of consuming high levels of sugar so we keep um the you know snacks and juices and sodas um, down to a bare minimum inside the house and um, also Chevy is gluten intolerant which is something I didn't learn until later and I think that's another um, reason why his he doesn't have seizures very often anymore because um, and he still eats some gluten because um, Gluten is hard. Gluten-free products is not only are they expensive, but they're hard to find. They're hard to come by. And um, but when you go on a gluten-free diet, trust me, you're going to lose some weight because by Chevy being gluten-free, uh, a gluten intolerant, that pretty much forced me to go on um, gluten-free as well. And um, so we don't eat that much bread, crackers. Um, I did find macaroni and cheese, gluten-free macaroni and cheese dinners online at Brandless, a company called Brandless, B-R-A-N-D-L-E-S-S dot -S com. You can order gluten-free products from them. And um, we also recently found a gluten-free grocery, well, not a gluten-free, but a health food store, a health food grocery store, I guess it's called, here in Alpine, Texas. And um, so we also have access now to gluten-free pancakes, but gluten brandless, they sell gluten-free pancakes, gluten-free macaroni and cheese. Um, you know, they sell those things online and gluten-free cornbread because when you're on a gluten-free diet and not so much by choice, but because you have to be on a gluten-free diet, you know, if you don't find these gluten-free products, that means you're not eating bread. You're not eating um, macaroni and cheese. You're not eating cornbread. You're not eating um, crackers. You're not eating, you know, um, just regular sandwich bread. And, um, you know, you're not eating pasta. So, yeah, you're definitely um, going to lose some weight. Because you can't eat these things. It's, and what can you eat, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can eat fruit, vegetable, and meat. You can eat all the meat you want. You can eat meat until you pass out. You can eat um, vegetables. Which, and this is a good thing because I'm a meat eater. I love eating meat. Most Americans are, are meat lovers. And so um, meat, you know, generally don't have gluten in it. It's the pasta and the breads and the um, pastries. Um you know that you have to stay away from and and so um but you can eat all the meat you want and also as a result i've learned different ways to prepare vegetables which that worked out good and um but yeah but you can get um gluten-free products from brad brainless brandless b r a n d l e s s dot com and, um, you know, and, and outside of that, you know, you might be able to find a local place. But if not, 
um, brand brandless online they they're a good source of uh, gluten-free products and um, but yeah and so also a person that's prone to um, seizures you want to keep their sugar level down you want to give them some alternatives and see and the same thing like whenever there's something you can't have quickly replace it with something that you can have you know like um we we instantly increase our vegetable intake which is a good thing that's always a good thing we increase our vegetable intake we eat more salads now and um we also increase our our fruit intake you know we do more fancy fruit eating with whipped cream and um well we always been big meat eaters so um but yeah, the and you can also um, rice is not too bad. Rice is very starchy, um, have a tendency to make people gain weight, and, and um, so that's the only downside about eating rice. And I think I'm gonna do a video about um, just increasing your your diet. You know, increasing your your in, your food intake not the the amount of food that you eat but the different types of the variety that's what i'm talking about increasing the variety of food that you eat because um a lot of people especially in um people from different ethnic groups we tend to eat a lot of certain groups of food like certain people like italians eat a lot of pasta um mexican eats a, a lot of um tortillas a lot of bread yeah black people we eat a lot of, of soul food a lot of fried food and um but when you increase your the variety of food that you eat and increase the the different types of food that you know how to cook because if you can only cook a certain type of food then that's what you're going you in you're going to end up eating so when you increase what you can cook the, you know expand the variety of food that you can cook and in terms you you will expand what you eat and so you can still eat the same amount you can still um you know just eat ridiculous amounts of food sometimes uh, like some of us do but um just because you're eating more of a variety you're probably going to lose weight you know, it's, it's if you um, have a tendency of being overweight anyway, you're probably going to notice that you're going to um, lose a little, drop a few pounds, simply because um, you, you're not starving by no means. You're probably even eating more. But instead of eating a lot of meat or eating a lot of fried food like you used to do or eating a lot of excessive amount of pasta and excessive amount of bread, you're eating more meat, you're eating more vegetables, you're eating more fruit, you know, um, and you, you're finding healthier ways of preparing food as well. You're not just frying or deep frying, you know, you're sauteing, you're boiling, you know, you're grilling, you're baking, and um, so you're preparing your food more healthy too. But yes, um, making food for, um, lowering shabby sugar intake and it's gluten intake and um just monitoring you know how much sugar that he's um having during the day that has helped tremendously uh on um cutting down on his seizures and um i'll probably do another video on the same subject about six months from now to report if he's still been seizure free if he's gone a whole year without a seizure but yes um i know part of it was due to you know because when you artistic you tend to be intolerant to a lot of things that other people have that has no effect on other people you know i can eat all the sugar in the world you know i might gain 20 pounds but i'm not going to have a seizure i'm not going to get sick um, i'm not going to get a headache um and I think also when Shelby is holding his ears, I think that's when he's coming close to, to being in danger of having a seizure. And I think because he, I think he gets a headache or his ear or ear aches. I'm not sure, but it seems like that is like a sign that he's 
going into the danger zone. And um but yeah, the um keep his sugar level down. And also people that um suffer from autism, you gotta keep their stress level down. It takes a very patient person to um care for a person with autism. You have to be patient. You really have to love this person because you see how they are genius in one way, but they, and then they're totally helpless in another. And um, it has something to do with the way the artistic brain goes in and out, or it has it has what it needs in one area of the brain, but it's not making the connection in another way and um and then at the same time they can be um artistic people are they, they are artistic on one hand but they also um smart and manipulative they can be smart and manipulative on a, on a, on the other hand and you might not always be able to figure it out and um I think even in that way too, I think they're just like we are, you know, except everything is amplified with um, a person that's artistic. You know, like me, I might be manipulative, but I'm not gonna take it too far. You know, I might just, you know, try to get my way sometimes, but not all the times. And, um, you know, but you know, with them, with autistic people, they don't, they're just like we are, but more amplified. And they, they, it's, I'm, I'm thinking that they just don't know when to turn it off. When they find something good, like Shelby, he likes his juice. He don't know, you know, he can't just drink two cans of the juice. He, you know, if, if there's 10 cans of the juice in the house, he's probably going to drink all 10 cans unless he falls asleep first. So um, it's just different characteristics that um, I'll probably do a, 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 a video more extensive about artistic characteristics and their diet. And, um, you know, like we don't like stress, but we can cope with stress better than, they, they, than artistic people can. So I think that's one of the big difference between artistic people and non-artistic people is that... Um, we just cope with things better where in many cases they just can't cope with things at all and and they just have an intolerance to um stress um sugar and um gluten um you know different medications in and everything so the um and Shelby's one of like i call it Shelby's juice and some people like if you're trying to keep the sugar level down in um the person um with autism that you care for um and they you know Chevy he likes to drink drink something he's not going to drink just plain water so he but he must have something to drink you know um almost all day you know while he's awake so i just mix water um two quarts of water a dash of lemon juice or you know cut up a fresh lemon squeeze it and just put the whole lemon in the, let the whole lemon um s slice the lemon and let the um you know maybe in three or four parts and let it float in the water um add some honey to taste and see and honey is something that you almost can't overdo honey sugar you can easily give a person too much sugar but honey um you know it's almost like you don't have to worry about it it's a natural um antioxidant and um and i and I'm, i put some like i said some electrolyte in shelby's water as well i'm uh, just a, a little bit i don't have any specific measurements but just uh, you know just pour a couple of you know, just a couple of seconds i just pour some electrolyte in there and um the electrolyte is not actually for flavor it's just for to replace the electrolytes in his body and um most people agree you know they say electrolyte is good for babies and it's you know it's good to um help the body replenish the minerals in itself so yeah so that's just shelby's um juice that's like 
that's his basic juice and sometimes I get a little fancy with it um, usually um, I pour it over some ice so it's real cold um, sometimes I add some extra flavor um, from his juice Umex juice it's not too sweet mostly all natural a little sugar is added in it though and the um or just some flavor from sparkling water that we keep around the house too so Shelby he doesn't drink plain water so um but he will drink sparkling water because it has um we have the, the sparkling water that we get it has different flavors you can get lime lemon um strawberry watermelon um any almost any kind of um, flavored sparkling water that you might like so he will drink that and um he will drink the and i call it juice but actually it's just water flavored water some water with lemon and honey um some people call it lemonade um but actually um yeah it's like water flavored lemonade it's it's not like i really go out of my way to make the lemonade though i just want the water to be um have enough flavor in it where he'll drink it you know and um yeah and that's it talk to you later